All right, here's your directions on how to do the real objects gliding lab. Um, first thing that you're going to need to do is you need to actually uh, go collect some of the data. So here's the link to the data, and you'll open up that link, and you'll see there's a number of different Hot Wheels car collisions. So these are the cars that were used in making the various video clips. Um, I have the masses of each of the uh, cars in kilograms given, as well as the length of the cars. You'll need the length when you start to work in Logger Pro. The clips themselves are listed here. So you've got uh, five different choices. You're only going to have to do two of them. So pick a clip to use. Um, you can choose any of the five clips that you'd like. Um, the frame rate is 250 frames per second. So I'm just going to go ahead and select, uh, I'm going to take clip five here. Now what you'll need to do is you're going to um, get to this clip and you're going to have to download it. So you have to click on the download button to make sure you download it to your machine. And then you're going to open up Logger Pro. So now i got to go find Logger Pro. And we're going to open it up. Once you have Logger Pro open, you're going to go ahead and go under Insert Your Movie. And then you have to just find the movie. So I know that mine, I think, are saved in my um, let's see, desktop, in my Downloads folder. So I'm going to go to my Downloads. And here's my movie clip. I'm going to go ahead and open it. And now we need to get three different velocities from this video. Um, all of the cars, the first car is stationary, so your starting velocity is going to be zero for object two, but you're going to need to get your uh, starting velocity for object one, and that's where we're going to do some tracking. Now what I would do here is we're going to go ahead, I'm going to just click play, To drag the playhead. Okay, and you want to find the collision point between the two objects. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to frame advance. Okay, there's the collision point. So I'm going to back up, and I'm going to back up like seven frames. So one, two, three, four, six, seven. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put on my dots here. Um, so I'm going to add points. I need to find a length first, so I'm going to go ahead and set my scale first off of the stationary car. So I'm going to go from the bumper of the car, of the truck, to the other bumper. And that's that distance that was back here on our document. So if I go back to here, that's the length of the pizza truck, so that's point uh, eight or excuse me, 8.2 centimeters. I'm going to put this in meters, so that's 0 0.082, okay, meters, and I'll say okay. And then once I have that, I'm going to do my tracking of my points. So I'm going to pick a spot on my car that's easy to track. I'm going to pick this, uh, let's see, I'm going to use this little corner of the window and I'm going to add a point, add a point, add a point, and I'm going to just add my points until I get to the collision. Now seven points should be enough to show us that we've got um, fairly good constant velocity. So I'm going to now go back to, this is my trick here. Oh, i got to go to Options first. And I have to override my frame rate to be 240 frames per second. And then I'm going to go back here and set my origin on my first data point. And then we can now go to Page auto arrange and we're looking at the red dots so I'm just going to select the X values 
and we're going to do a linear fit of this data. So the linear fit should give us what our speed is for the car just before it collides. So to get back to where we're going to type our data, we're going back into this activity. So the masses you're going to be able to have, you'll want to type up a description of what the collision is so I know which clip you used and kind of talk a little bit about the details of the collision if you notice anything. Then I go my velocity of object 1 before the collision. Remember velocity of object 2 is going to be 0. And then we'll be able to figure out our momentum before the collision as well as the energy before the collision based on that velocity. The next thing that we need to do is we have to go to after the collision. So now once we go after that collision, I'm going to go back here to my Logger Pro, expand this out so I can see it again. I'm going to advance one frame because now that's where you can see that this collision is taking place. And we're just going to track some new points here. So again, I'm going to go off of the um, car. I'm going to try to target that same spot on the window. So. So I'm just going to do this. You notice that it looks like the wheels are going up a little bit. So that's something that I might want to indicate in my description of this video. And again, we only need about seven points. So I got three, six, seven. Okay. Once you get your points in there, then we can go back to um, figuring out our speed. So these are my new data points. I'm just going to highlight these data points and I'll do a linear fit. And so this will give me the slope or the speed of the, the second car after the collision. Now to get the um, first car's velocity, because if you notice the car here didn't move, we're going to have to go back in and we're going to have to remove some points. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to back myself up, or I'm going to actually remove my points here. So go to that white arrow. I'm going to click on a point, and then this is where I actually type or hit on my keyboard the delete button. And that's going to get rid of these points. Okay, And this is because I can't have two sets of data on the same graph, or else it won't give me my slope correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out. Okay, now i got to back my frames up. So back my frames up to that collision point again. So we just have to find that collision point. Okay, there's the collision point, and there's the point after the collision. So now we're going to track on our second vehicle. So we'll go back to our putting our dots on. I'm going to pick a different spot here. I'm going to go with this corner of this window. And again, we're targeting about seven data points. All right, now I think that's about seven. So then I can go back here to my page, my auto arrange, and now you can see that those new data points are what I'm going to look for. So I'm going to go back here and let's do this. I'm going to re reset my origin so my origin's easier to see. There we go. Now we can go back to that page, auto arrange. All right, and so really this is the data that I want to get. So I'll highlight my data and do my linear fit. And so that'll give me my speed for the car after the collision. So I've now got the speed for the first car after the collision, the speed for the second car after the collision, and then I can calculate out um, the momentums before and after 
Remember, both objects together will give you the momentum before, and both objects together will give you the momentum after. And we do the same thing with the energies. Now, it's highly likely that the momentums before and after are not going to be the same. But remember, there could be something like in the clip that I just showed, the front end of the truck went up, so that's some unaccounted for momentum shift. And I would probably do a difference of these just to see how close we are. With the energy, we're probably going to have a bigger gap between the energies. And this is where we get into elasticity. So when we do our uh, percentage of elasticity, I'm going to take the energy after the collision and divide it by the energy before the collision, times that by 100 to make it into a percentage, so that will give me a percentage of my elasticity. And then you'll just repeat this then for trial 2, and you'll be able to get another set of data to kind of look at and kind of make a comparison between trials 1 and trials 2, and then write a discussion. And your discussion should be make a claim about the elasticity of the collision, use some evidence from the lab to support it, and then make sure you talk about the scientific reasoning behind it. And that's all you have to do for this activity.